Is this your homework, Larry? Larry? Larry, is this your homework? Larry, is this your homework, Larry? You're killing your father, Larry. Is this your homework? Let's get into it. One, two, three. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to my Whiskey Den tonight, your favorite public access whiskey review show where craft whiskey is king. And Mike says in the next two comments. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification. Share the videos. Comment down below. Comment live in the chat. Comment whenever you want to. Don't forget, Monday nights are usually a live stream with a, our, our Evening With series. We have some fantastic ones coming up here the end of August and coming into September. And, of course, we have the special one tonight on Sunday night. It is, it is. And this one is where we're going to be looking at, oh, that didn't come through very well, Broken Barrel or Infused Spirits where Infused Spirits is kind of like the parent company. Broken Barrel is kind of like the whiskey company for them. But as you can see, we have Sean Leonard with us, who is tonight's benefactor. He has helped <laughs> donate some of the whiskey this evening. So we are happy he is, he is here with us. He got the cask strength version of what we're going to be drinking. So let's start off with um, the Infused Spirits normal one 95 proof kind of standard bottle Oop, damn reverse now what's neat about these guys is first off it comes from kentucky um i believe they are in nevada and the parent company or it's bottled in las vegas nevada it comes from kentucky and the parent company is in california so they're the most spread out <laughs> section of stuff i've seen in my really long product line but what they will do is they will get the whiskey they're getting put it in the barrels when they put it in the barrels a lot of times they will add staves from other from other barrels that already existed like they have a muzanera oak finish which we will probably be trying later tonight because why not try all three and give the people a chance to look at what's going on and what's coming out of them um well, i was ignoring the chat hey john how are you doing glad for stopping in in Texas, lady, hey, oh, saying hi to Mike. The rest of us aren't good, but Mike's got the special. <laughs> and uh, Mike like, with all the charm. I was polite. <laughs> you were polite. No, no, that's fair. That's fair. That, that will get that will get you some 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 gap. Um, oh, and Wheels is in. Good to see you. What are you people in the chat drinking? Um, and we are going to snort after you guys tell us what's going on with what you're uh, drinking. We are going to start sniffing. This very first bottle, 95 proof, 47.6% alcohol. This is their small batch version. So is their, um, so is the bigger version, but it's okay. Um, and I just wanted to get into what the difference between this and the cast strength version are, because there's not always that kind of punch up easy comparison between them. Oh, hey, Whiskey Straight Out, good to see you from across the pond. Thanks for stopping in. Spence from Canada, north of the border. What the heck? It's always good to see you, you Canadians in here. Yeah. Um, and a Weller 107, and it's a pick. Well, at least I'll congratulate nice. you on doing a pick because picks make a big difference with that. So, Sean, mm. how are you doing? Where did you end up picking up, just because we have him here, where did you end up picking up your bottle? Uh, actually, it was in uh, North Carolina. No, no, I'm sorry. It was traveling through from North Carolina. I actually stopped in Kentucky at like some... I don't know. Am I supposed to name drop? Like uh, you can name drop whoever you want. Uh, it was no. It was uh, a wine and spirits, or no, uh, total wine. So uh, they actually have actual excellent stuff there. So can't complain. No, I I don't think you will see most of us complain about that. But it's uh, pretty rare um, that you'll see anyone complain about total wine. I mean, maybe the price, but compared to most people's selection, it usually kind of jumps up quite a bit. Um, so thank you for grabbing that one on the way through. Appreciate it. Mike, Ben, what are you guys getting on the, no Ooh, the nose? And AJ, you son of a gun, I saw you got that smoke wagon. That sounds dangerous. Yeah, I am, Mike. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> getting me in trouble. Yeah, I am. I do ramble, and I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get back around to it. And any other questions I missed later on? Yeah. I got that dusty hay and corn and a little citrus and, and like... Um, 
a butterscotch, but like a like an old butterscotch, like not not freshly cooked. Mm-hmm. And a little like white wine. Yeah, I get that bright like pickup on the front half of the nose. Oh, an almond. We're just gonna let Mike have his review show here. You keep going, Mike. <laughs> this is this is the first I've had of this. I, I've never oh, okay. I, I didn't try this prior to this, so it's it's yep. uh, it's interesting. And I haven't had any of the infused stuff prior to that. Yeah. Hmm. I'm still getting a little bit of the like uh, dusty hay barn or like an old kind of like what a bar would smell to me if I was in uh, Tombstone. Yeah. Like this, like this dust is kind of covering the air through it. I am getting some, like you said, a little bit darker, rich note, like the molasses in it, but no, it has some, it has some nice flavors to it. None of them are overpowering, and almost seems a little downplayed for forty-seven and a half percent. Yeah, it's it's on the soft and rounded side. Of things, you know, the got a tiny ethanol hit to it at first, but that that's gone. It's it's like you said, it's it's dusty barn uh, corn mash. That almond, it's like almond extract to me, leaps out more so than vanilla. Yeah. Really, it's more it leans towards the nutty almond side. Um, Do we know who the distiller is? Uh, they don't technically give you that one. It comes from Owensboro, Kentucky. If if someone wants to look that up, what distillery is in Owensboro, there's a fairly good chance that should be 100% accurate. It's, it's not like Louisville where you have eight or ten to choose from when you yeah. punch that shit in. It's just good luck. Um, so, Sean, I, what are you getting at? The problem is, is I don't have the nose for whiskey. I have the palate, but no, no nose for it. It's it's just what you get off it. That's yeah. the whole that's the whole point of this is just what you get. And if you're if you're not getting anything, because I was just getting more barn and hay for a while. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I unfortunately don't have the vocabulary and adjectives that Mike throws out when he <laughs> describes the uh, <laughs> smell of a, a whiskey. Just the, whatever comes like to your mind. Whiskey yeah, just, like a traditional bourbon, more so than some other stuff. So it almost seems like this didn't nothing. Have... Nothing that jumps out at me. It's, it just smells like whiskey. Once you know it, it does kind of smell Kentucky. All right, I got a few Owensboro distilleries for you. Okay. Uh, Oz Tyler Distillery <laughs> would be the main one. Okay. Medley Charles, The Bard, Dusty Barn, and Crooked Trail or Crooked oh. Tail. That's. Okay, that's way too many to just take a random guess. Okay. At. Yeah, uh, the last one we we're gonna say was the last one. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the nosy Tyler, one of them doing the uh, fake aging. Uh, one of those in there. I'm, I'm sorry, is. rapid aging process. The rapid yeah. aging, not these guys, but I, I know that there is someone in that area that you were mentioning does. Right. Starting and, a little apple pie note on this. It's, it yeah, a little up. apple. So this is batch six for all the stat horrors still watching out there. Um, batch six, we know, we know what matters. Respect the hose. Yeah. <laughs> or and it, I don't find it horror forward. <laughs> for those of you who have seen the French Lick streams, and I'm going to jump into some tasting on this. Yeah. Yeah, horror forward, horror forward is trademarked. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow, very caramel. Mm-hmm. Wow, a lot of honey too. Just, just jump in with anything. <laughs> yeah, more, more, more than what I was thinking. Yes, John, we all know who Tyler Boone is. We are not allowed to discuss <laughs> him on the show. So, and now that we have, we will be in trouble. He who should the, not be named. Exactly. Yeah, he who, he who does not know what his own whiskey is. Should not be named anymore. Whiskey Voldemort. <laughs> so, it, 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 Sean, that's a guy who said he um, made his own whiskey when really, and said that, what was it, bourbon isn't whiskey? Is that right. It? Bourbon and yeah, whiskey are, are bourbon not Bourbon and whiskey yeah. are different things when that's not, not really the case. Um, 
And he, he defended his point as he being the distiller knew what he was talking about. And then his dad outed him with that they source. So it was yeah. this lovely roundabout thing. So we just, we try to stay away from it. And I don't, we don't review his stuff. We leave that for Ed. Good luck, Ed, now that you're back. Cheers. <clears throat> Good to see you back, Ed. Um, but on the flavor on this, it was kind of subtle. It, this is actually much better than, I, I like it better now than when I first tried it. When I first tried it, I, it had a little more acetone note to it, which has kind of faded away with a couple of weeks in the bottle. Yeah, I, I get it. It's, it's all right at the front. It's, it's a little bit of a grain mash. And then it just, that caramel comes in really rich. A um, little bit of honey. And then I'm getting a little bit of that funky acetone note to it, mm -hmm. kind of on the right tail end there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of that flavor that you get when it's either young or, or it's uh, yeah. kiln-dried wood for the barrels. Yeah, exactly. There, there's it's, there's a little niche of that that is going coming through this. Yeah. And that's, for me, to, to be a Kentucky bourbon, this, this tastes like it is young. I would, mm -hmm. you know, I'm guessing in the two to three year range. I would think the same thing for what's going on. What's going on with that? Um, and AJ brings up a good point. And he, yeah, we're, we're five minutes in. He's a fucking douche nozzle, that dude. <laughs> no, no way we we enjoy people who fib about things. It's better just to tell the truth. Let's pour a little bit more of this, Sean. It's creamier uh, than I thought. Would yes, than I thought and, it would be. And it does have a couple, a couple other notes on the taste that. I'm getting a little bit of a dusty peanut note coming on the on the finish. Yeah. But mm. for me, the integration's not there. The notes, I would describe the notes as a little, slightly, slightly spiky on a few things here. They're just, mm -hmm. they don't feel like they flow together really well. Right. That's, that's exactly what I was feeling on it is that, comp how about this, compared to what we've had recently, this has spikes or it has notes that you mm -hmm. can clearly tell take center stage for a second yeah. or two and other stuff comes forward. It's none of it's really, none of it's horrible, you know, as far no. as, as far as flavors go, um, taste the, for me, the aftertaste or the finish is just, it's sitting there, but I'm still getting like wood barrel, like almost like a cedar wood right rather than like an oak wood so it's like this brighter one so i don't know it's a yeah it's it's not a it's not the most pleasant kind of you know usually sometimes in, a, in good whiskeys you get a nice pleasant oak or barrel note there this this feels a little bit off to me i, I would agree yeah. so I was, not not my not my favorite it's okay yeah. but what, what you guys said it seems young yeah for a kentucky whiskey it's not it's not very layered or meshed together. It's almost yeah. like you're you have this and now you have this and now you have this and now you have this. So it's like it's not quite put together. Yeah. And and I'm I'm hoping they would save money by by getting it younger and maybe trying to age it themselves or they're out in, in New Mexico and Nevada. Because you would think even six months there could torque could torque the flavor profile pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting. I'm now getting a little bit of a green spirit note coming in on the tail end of that. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm. That's exactly what that funky weird. What I'm picking up. It, it's a green. It's a green spirit note. This is. Yeah, this needs some more time in the barrel. Bit. Yeah, it's a good way. Yep. It's a sour note in your mouth. Mm -hmm. is what yeah. Overall, um, not not bad. No, no, no. And I think this was. Well. I knew the the Musenier when I got it was like forty, and I think this was like twenty twenty five. Was that so? Yeah. I mean, you get Ivan Williams bottle and Bond and other stuff, but that's not for the price that you're paying. It's not not bad. Or is that for seven fifty or three seven five? Seven fifty. Really? Yeah. For a Mizan, for a Mizanara one? No, no, that was like forty. Still, that forty seems I don't cheap for that. that. Well, that's because they take a take a barrel, they break it. And then they add ah, the okay. broken barrel staves into okay. the whiskey to kind of help kind of cut it that way. Okay. Um, so th they are getting it. It's just getting there from a roundabout way. Now I got to bring up, we're, we're going to jump. We're going to start pouring some of the cast strength that Sean got. Same, same type of label. Huge, fucking huge cork, man. This thing is like twice, 
twice the size of the normal <laughs> it, is, it is ridiculous and to quote to choke a donkey is not like yeah. out of there man that is that's a that's an engorged cork it's <laughs> a, a very plausible thing it's healthy it's a healthy <laughs> so it's quite a gonna, cork in your hand we're gonna pour a little of this and see what we think of it because this is the cast strength version um, but this is only batch two um, and infused with French oak, Oloroso sherry, and ex bourbon casks until it's balanced smooth. So they do, um, they do try to throw a little bit extra into this one and, and let it wait for a bit. So I thought it was just a, I thought they were just doing a single one. Oh, same one, just cast strength, just different batches. Um, this one is 116 proof, so 20 points more um, out of this one. And I'm going to see if everyone gets what I was getting out of this, where I think the 20 points more made a big difference for me. Yes. Oh, yeah. The nose is, there's a lot more going on, in it, and I'm yeah. finding it more interesting. Yes. Mm. Very. And it's, this is a crazy brown note. It's, yeah. It's darker. Yeah. It, it's not just darker. It's like a, it's like a flat brown. It's yeah. really crazy weird. Like, not even in comparison. This is just... A different color than I'm accustomed to seeing in general. Yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's a, almost a like a weird iced tea kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Where where the one Sean's going is nice, nice and bright, and then the other one is like three shades darker. Yeah, it's and it's like honey honey gold on the edges, and then it dips into this uh, sweet tea looking yeah. in the middle there. So it's got decent yeah. legs on it too. Oh, and Emily, yeah, we are happy to have another another lady in the chat. That's uh, that, I'm sorry, I wasn't looking at that. I could miss stuff in the chat, but yeah, that's really good. Uh, the cork is compensating. It's, it's, it's got some, <laughs> hopefully, the drink lives up to what's going on here. It's like a Texas belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is this is a rich molasses. There's no high green note or super citrusy bad oh, that really sticks to the glass it's almost too. like a little zest yeah i'm getting like orange zest on this not as much dust uh richer richer flavor for me it's the sherry is jumping out rich fruit dark fruits mm -hmm. See, i don't i don't get the sherry type fruits i get like a weird but a weird berry like, you can uh, definitely tell the alcohol content. Like raspberries. Increase just by... Oh, just the, the nose? nose? Just on the nose, you can tell it's there. Oh, yeah. And oh, my God. The green funk, there is... Okay, just... <laughs> like, just just that alone, The it's like they the ground out the green funk in the barrel strength that is in the, that is in the normal one. I get oatmeal, too. Oatmeal and vanilla and honey. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say grain forward because there's like, you know, we've had some whiskeys now. It's like the, the standard of grain forward. It's yeah. like, yeah, you, you don't touch that, but it's, uh, this is and like chocolate covered nuts. Yeah. So I was going to get, I'm like, there's like a dark chocolate, salty balls, chocolate, nuts. <laughs> chocolate, nuts. And, and put it, them in your mouth and suck them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll check the saltiness here. Mm. All right. Mm. <laughs> there is a little bit of brininess to it. Yeah, uh -huh. at the end, it's this weird, like, I was going to be like, that has a funk. But it, you're right. It is like a brining. It's like a funk, and then brine rolls in on the finish. It's like... Uh, Salted or boiled peanuts, salty boiled peanuts, the juice when you're popping those open, popping those shells open. That's on the on the finish there. That's that briny briny peanut water that's in the in the in the boiled peanuts. It is it, viscous. <laughs> it's viscous, but yeah. okay, does anyone else think when you sniff it, does it smell thin on the nose? Like Four, four being, what are we at? Uh, 
150? Yeah. 158. It smells thin for being almost 60%. Yeah, I, I don't think it smells I don't think it smells like that proof because they can barely get in there. Yeah, and it doesn't the comp like you're getting the complexity, but you're hunting for it in this one. Sa same thing in the other one where it comes to you. This one you're hunting more. But you don't get that that green note, which is nice. I have to like that. I'm gonna go back in for another taste here. Hmm. Definitely like some, I'm going to say black pepper. There's like a punch of a little bit of spice and there's black pepper that hangs around for a, for a while for me, even into the finish. Um, the rye spice kicks up for like yeah. two seconds, then it's black pepper and just black pepper holds on with barrel in the finish for me. I see what you mean by the rye. Yeah. The rye side, you know. Oh, but yeah, it good. does carry, it does kind of carry that. The youth. Mm -hmm. Mike, you're talking about a funky uh, berry note on the nose. I'm getting at the start on this, it, it's almost like a cranberry note on the palate. Yeah, like some little tart, you know. Like a tart berry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. It's I, it's interesting. I mean, even with the youthful green green stuff that I'm getting, I, I green stuff, but you know, the youthfulness that you get, mm -hmm. I like it. It's the sharp, like, Titch of piney note is not overwhelming enough to hate it. You know what I mean? Like if right. you feel it in there, and then you start feeling other notes, and you feel the heat coming up. Mm -hmm. I think is <laughs> screwing with me a bit right now. Oh, I'm gonna, like David Lee Roth said. Yeah, <laughs> definitively, I would say the cast strength <laughs> is is significantly better than the than the regular. It's yes. it's very much better. Here's what I'm not liking about it. I'm tasting the French oak influence in here, and it doesn't feel like it jives with the rest of the whiskey. And that's, I'm like, if you left the French oak influence out of it, this might jump up a few notches big time. And it, it's and it's still good, and it's still really enjoyable, and it is a big jump up from the standard. But that the notes I'm getting from, you know, just picking out what, what is the French oak in here, and it, it just doesn't, it doesn't mesh with the rest of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's i think i agree with you that that and that might be its downfall is it tried to play too soft and friendly with that where maybe it should have should have leaned into more of the rye and slap you know slap you a bit right you know, like, yeah to take the wind take the wind out of your sails a little bit and, and try to hide that um yeah it doesn't seem very doesn't seem to be the the flavors aren't well married yeah but they're there, and I find them to be more interesting than the regular version. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Does it give any indication of its age? Not that it matters, but I don't know if they're legally obliged. I guess, it, well, what, depending on what the labeling says. but um, no, I, don't know. I didn't see anything. <clears throat> Infused with all of all so sherry casts. They use a ton of port or something like that. Um, no, there is no words up into how long this usually is, but I'm guessing five or under. <laughs> mm. Oh, now you're just taunting there, Texas lady. Where are you here? Okay. Super. Yeah, I have not had to had fro have froak yeah, yet. Froak's I, a I whole can't get it. And you know that. That's uh, just mean. Yeah, that's just... Froak is amazing. <laughs> taunting. If we had a flag to throw at you, we would throw it at you right now. Yes. That's just... That's just this is too much. Okay, I did this. This is uh, the the bourbons together. Yeah, together. Which it's weird. It just has that weird grayness to the yeah to it's, the whiskey. It's a weird flat color. I don't know. And Spencer, maybe yeah, they're not well married. So shotgun wedding. Yeah. Forced together. Yeah, I can I can kind of see that. I can kind of see that. I like that Spencer. We might use that more often. You know, a like marriage of convenience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neither one with a good pedigree, but um, blended together, they're be they're it's better. There's still a little greenness there, but it's not so uh, it's not so spiky. Okay, I just poured a little bit in. It makes me you're right. That does just kill the color. <laughs> it's, it's just so weird. <laughs> like I just poured a little bit of that in in the old one. You can 
pour some more, Sean. We're usually drunk when we get done with streams. It's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, That's the point of it, right? Hmm. It smells like steel molasses. To me, it's like this. You're getting a lot more of the dusty note, I think, is what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. Still getting some of that dusty note taking control with how much I poured in here. Mm. Oh, papaya and blue cheese? I don't even know. That sounds crazy. That sounds crazy, Texas. Lady. Not a mixologist, but we'll see what happens. That actually sounds freaking amazing. Sweet fruit and then the the funky brininess of the blue cheese playing playing together. I just don't like real blue cheese. Like I don't mind the flavor, oh, but I man. don't like eating it. <laughs> this is my thing. It's like there's a textural issue, kind of like with cottage cheese. <laughs> Not, you not. you know what you should try, and it's actually really good with with whiskeys. Is uh, take a get a get a wheat thin, you know, just like a thin dense cracker or whatever. Put honey on it, and then a couple of blue cheese crumbles, and eat oh, eat yes. that when you're having whiskey. Yes. Is, is it sad yeah. that the best one I've had is the one mixed together? No, no. I mean, well, it's the mixed together. I it's enjoyable. Still a little well, green, I, but enjoyable. It puts me in the mind of a Heaven Hill or Jim Beam almost on the nose when they're blended together. Yeah, when they're blended together, like it takes out some of the pitchiness. A dirty Jim Beam. Yeah. I thought that was Jim Beam Black. Just how you like not, it. It's yeah. not even the same. Um, but no, that, yeah, together is actually, I, I agree with you. I think together is better than by itself. Um, yeah. It's, I mean, again, not that they were. It's you know, it horrible flat. by themselves. I'm just saying that it flattens it out and rounds it for me. Not not yeah. necessarily in this like amazing like blow your mind way, but it just kind of subdues some of the punchiness. Yeah. Hmm. I do like the idea of them adding staves to to barrels though, just to add flavor. But I can understand why people will think that that's a shotgun wedding, just forcing that flavor in there. Well, and it's maybe After the it, fact, and it's if you give it more time, like right. maybe, exactly. maybe you let it sit for longer, like that, like another six <laughs> months to a year. Let but you, but you, yeah. you are in Nevada, so you probably are hitting that well, Nevada it's have... angel share rate, like you do in Texas, where it's, it's like, a fast, it's a fast wedding in Nevada. It's not a proper yeah, courtship. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to keep, we'll have to. keep the proprieties at all times. <laughs> No patty fingers, if you please. Yeah, I got married in Nevada. That makes me feel. <laughs> but that was a planned one. Okay, that was you planned. weren't there. That was planned. And, was and planned. it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> that was planned. All right. Now, just because we have it here, we didn't say anything about it, but we're trying to get through reviews. So we're, let's add another one. We're going to add one. <laughs> this is the Muzanira Oak Finish of Broken Barrel. This one they have. They actually have some pretty cool Japanese artwork on it. They do. It actually looks pretty, pretty sweet. Um, as far as getting your hands on it, and if you guys don't know, Muzanira Oak from Japan, a lovely different finish to it. It has a great flavor, but it also, it, uh, from what I understand, it goes through the wood pretty easily. Um, as far as like it gets out pretty good. Yeah, it takes a, it takes a while for it to actually be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ice House, good to see you in the chat. Nice to see you there. Thanks for stopping in. Now, this oh. one, a traditional look. Almost, It almost looks a little too yellow, honey, for me <laughs> on this one. So this is just another another unique color, but this one's bright <laughs> and light. It, it looks like a lemon peel in, in a glass, like if you just took that little hue off it. Um, I'm from the north, John. It's Musanira. <laughs> oh, you didn't, you didn't, yeah, it's Musanira. I, uh, that, that's what happens when you're from from the Great White North of things, or close enough to the Great White North. <laughs> I don't swords the negative pronunciation. Fucker, <laughs> <laughs> Mike. <laughs> but, okay, this this smells like like freshly sanded bondo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not, it's not bad. That's not a bad smell. I, wasn't ready for that. I don't know if I ever want to like have anything that necessarily smells like that. Okay. It brings back good memories, so 
This is oh, incredibly, incredibly lighter <laughs> on the nose compared to the other two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, this revels back, since we had it tonight, more of that Virginia cider cask where it's a brighter, more vibrant on the nose whiskey. This is exactly still 50%. getting. I'm getting actually the the wood notes on the back end of this on the nose. Um, I'm act, I don't want to say I'm surprised, but I'm getting some wood flavors in there. Yeah, like but like dusty wood, like wood sawdust. And uh, yeah. it does say that it's uh, blended between a four year old Indiana corn whiskey and a five year old Kentucky corn whiskey. So they, they blend those two and then they toss in the Musnier oak and come up with what we have now. Um, maybe it's because we've had four whiskeys in like 30 minutes um, and that's probably the case, which, which it is. But this one on the smell, it just smells more subdued overall i don't ben it's got a pretty light nose yeah very light mm. what are you guys getting on the nose i'm having a hard time pulling things from it now, to be honest yeah it's it's very light it's fresh almost um almost herbal yeah i was thinking this it's almost like a oh oh well texas lady we'll see you later thanks for stopping in it's yep. good seeing you guys have a good rest of the night and good luck on uh, on the house tomorrow with the, with the work they're doing. Working with contractors is always fun. Cheers to you on that. Good luck. <laughs> this okay. almost smells more like a malt than it does a bourbon. Is this a bourbon finish? Yeah. With Mizunura? No, this is this. This is two two bourbons, a four year old Indiana corn whiskey. Sorry about okay. that. And a five-year-old <laughs> Kentucky corn whiskey. So it's both corn dog. Corn whiskeys. Mm. Okay. So you would so you would almost assume they're fifty-one or above, just saying they're corn whiskeys. So they would qualify as bourbons in, in my mind. I'm not not for sure, but I would lean that way. Um but yeah, I'm getting maybe more it, it is like a light candied. Oh, it, it might not be here. a bourbon because it's not yeah. listed as a bourbon anywhere That's on fine. here, so it might not be fifty one. I know. I feel like a candied dry fruit. Candy dry fruit, but like I'm dried getting, fruit chips. Like, yeah. Think about this: dried fruit chips with, I was gonna say fairy floss. I was thinking Australian with cotton candy, like on the outside of it. Yeah, cotton candy for sure. Yeah. There's almost a bit of like essence of white grape. Hmm. Maybe a hint of uh, you talking about dried fruit, like a dried apricot. Man, I'm digging deep for these. They're not flying out of the glass. There's actually. nothing that's jumping out at me. But then, but a, right. then a little bit of the greenness. It seems like hidden in there again. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's just that two-thirds. funk. There's that young funk. Yeah, two thirds of the way into the finish on the on the inhale, I start picking that up. I start I start picking up a little bit of that green note again, but. Um, let's jump into some tasting notes. It's been yeah. a half an hour. We can knock out three reviews in a half hour, 40 minutes. We can do that nowadays. We're, we're that damn good. Let's do six. <laughs> Sean, what do you have you on your my, counter? You want my real opinion on things, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey tastes good. <laughs> Unleash the Rambler. <laughs> All right. Hmm. I didn't pick up anything different on the palate. Kind of, oh, like a, you get it when you have a water that's very heavy in minerals. Mm-hmm. You get that, that little bit of. This is a very light whiskey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did, it's creamier. Uh, again, it's, it's creamier than I thought it would be. It has some citrus notes to it. Yeah. Um, I find this one more interesting the other two on the flavor profile mm-hmm. um just by what's going on and they're trying it, to find it and it, it tastes more rounded it's very pleasant yeah this is you can drink this and i here mm-hmm. let's let's pull that up and we have 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one is, is this one has gotten its its toll out of there. I found oh, this Friday night. Yeah, and it's fifty percent <laughs> alcohol, so it's half. Yeah. You know, it's not for what it is. I think it punches well below its weight and is extremely drinkable. Yes. Not, yeah. Not as super complex on the flavors, but it has some unique stuff in there. Um, for forty dollars, I find, I. I would probably get this again. I don't have I don't have anything to gripe or complain about it. Good yeah. whiskey. That that's exactly it. There there's nothing to, to whine about. Yeah. Yes, I still need smaller glasses anyway. We will get the half of a sh- half of a Glen Karen. I, I only have one. I got so. my little dainty boys. Oh that's a nice little Milam and Green. Oh you you guys you have them? I feel like Mike should be drinking with a pinky out. Well I've got this and then I got this little one too. Mm. Like, <laughs> you can hold and the little bastard's ball, like a fancy mm-hmm. boy. But, no, this, this one for me. I, I don't know if you guys get this. I get a hit of apple mm-hmm. right on the very front end of it, and then it fades into like a caramel banana note. That doesn't that say the yeah. caramel is definitely there. You get a little banana. Oh. All three of them together. Mm. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll get there. Yep. Um, mm. I just plan. It it's light and fresh, but still, you on the tail end of the Muzanera, I th- I feel like you're getting a <laughs> lot of different. You're getting the different woods affecting the finish. That's where I'm getting the most flavor from this is from the finish. Yeah. And the other stuff plays good, but then that's where it actually like say goes from like a thirty percent to like. 50 percent flavor word that so finish is long out. yeah it's still and it's still yeah. a little heat a little spice that is of these three i would totally buy that one yeah yes well mm-hmm. over the other two yep that's what i was working towards too yeah. i wanted to see if you guys were thinking that because i, I would like, agree it, it really does have a scale and it's if i had these blind i don't think i would peg they came from the same place or the same people producing them hmm you know, I, and maybe intentionally so they weren't by what they're doing, but I would not have. I'm, I'm missing a common theme that some distilleries or places use. I'm just not getting that. But yes. Okay. Now, the blend. Oh, boy. There we go. Oh, you need more. We can pour more, Sean. Just no, no. Hold on. I'm, I'm okay. I'll just enjoy the. The one that I would choose. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine. Captain experiment. We don't have to go crazy. All right. Okay, okay. The three is better. You get. I think you get the creaminess on the nose from the Muzanera. Okay. This is okay. Let's hope so. <laughs> Out the nose, man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> totally wrong, too. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, no tasting notes off of that one. You're not supposed to inhale it like that. Thanks, John. Thanks. Mm, okay. <laughs> Get some hard hitting distillers to come down from Chicago with a blowtorch and a pair of pliers. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The blend of all three tops out for me. I don't know how it works for you. It does. It does. It's it's killing the green note for me, or at least turning it down quite a bit so it's not as noticeable. I like the creaminess that it adds to it, and it's a much more enjoyable trip around the whole whiskey for me rather than it being spiky or... Bing, 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 bing. It's got this nice, it's got more of a roll to it. Here, okay, here's what I would like. And I'm not real familiar with their stuff. And, and I'm very appreciative of getting to try it. But I think if they were to just do a blend, I like what they're doing, you know, by you know using the chips and infusing it and stuff. But how about making an American whiskey where it is a blend of all these different things, do it after the fact? I think you'd have a very nice whiskey. American whiskey that's been blended with all these different things. 
Or, or well, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I like that, but it... Mm. Then it's just getting the barrel. Maybe it's because you can get a Moussinier oak barrel and fill three, four barrels with the staves instead of trying to let mm. one barrel age and re repurpose it, you know? Like, yeah. Now, know. are these... Are these single barrel releases? Um, the first two are not. They're small batch. Yep. Okay. And this other one is limited edition. So I know it's not one barrel, but it's not. Okay. Because um, playing off what Mike said, that, that makes me question a little bit. Just, you know, just call it like it is how good their blender is in house. Well, this and blending is, uh, the different batches and the different stuff together because as much as some of this some of these notes really clashed and as young as it is it feels like it feels like they could use a nancy fraley to step in and help them select hmm. barrels and did well, you say nancy be, work yeah. things out <laughs> you know like let, let's be honest is there anyone else that would would turn her coming by and giving a little sniff taste test um i i almost feel like i think the very first one is I think the first two are just really young spirits. Yes. Yeah. You know, I think I think like you said, Ben, two to three year olds in Kentucky, maybe they need to be a five or a six to get a little more rounded off, um, and, and kind of hit where they should be. Or I know it will be, and maybe they do this there when they're aging it themselves. Maybe the angel share is effing scary. You know, yeah. like I'm, like once you go from Kentucky to there, I'll just be, you have maybe a year and a half or two years in Nevada. And then you want to get it out of the barrel again, even if it's only been in that long. Maybe they're cutting it at the first one. I'd say maybe six months or eight months in there. You know, it would be great if you were watching a whiskey show that told you actual facts, but we're not doing that. We are making <laughs> <laughs> we're just guessing how what reality is and then commenting we're, on it. We're saying things, and then it, yeah. then it will become a fact. That would, That's uh, right. Yeah. The great waste of the world. <laughs> we were told there would be no facts. <laughs> Well, th yeah. at least this fact. This is bottle two thousand two hundred and fifteen out of six thousand sixty. So that's what a limited okay, well, release is. At least that's what it says. How do we know that's, that's actually been fact checked? <laughs> it's in red on the bottle, man. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, if you're paying for another color, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Did Snopes pay? verify that? That's when a you, level of commitment that you, you just paid, <laughs> when you paid for gold like labeling and then you start throwing yeah. in other colors. You know, you you've gone the extra mile. I do. I really, I really like all these together. I think if, if they did, if they just did a blend of all of them. Now, now toss in the spirit that we reviewed before the live stream. Mm. Okay. Three. That's what I've been sipping on. You threw that okay. in with the blend. Mm -hmm. oh, the, the triple mix still has some green note to it for me. A little bit. Yeah. It, it, just that it's so light. But it's not so prevalent. It, yeah, exactly. It fades away easier amongst the other notes, but it is still I think in there. I think um, that Virginia will help cover the green note. Okay. The, the bright, the brightness, the brightness of that one. So this is your blend. <laughs> that's, the, that's the blend of the three and the Virginia cider. Cast yeah. Did before. The Virginia oh cider dear cider. God. What? No, just the nose on that. <laughs> you, yeah. Like you're talking masking all that. It, it might, <laughs> well, we were talking movies earlier. My, my daughter, I was I was out of town and she's like, hey, I'm just so you know, I'm watching Paul Blart Mall Cop, and the and the and the, the quote that comes up was he's he's going peanut butter filling the cracks of the heart, <laughs> and that's and that's that's what that's what that is. Yeah, Virginia Virginia Highland cider cask fills in the know. cracks of the. I don't know if I can handle that. That's pulling my mouth in too many different directions. <laughs> <laughs> the gimp does that to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the ball gag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? I think I know what you're talking about. It's the malt kicks in at two points in here, like halfway and at the very end where it throws my whole idea of what's going on. I'm not saying I don't like it. No, yeah. I don't. Like but it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the honesty. That's, that's sorry really sorry to ruin that for you, Sean. <laughs> I, I, I love it. Just, Just let me know. Like, yeah. I mean, it's one man's opinion. Yeah. Hmm. But it's too bright on the front end and too malty. You get some nice clove. Now this almost it almost tastes like a scotch. Yes. It yeah. tastes like a scotch tried to kill a bourbon. The and nose is better than the palate. Yes, Heck. the nose is much better than the palate. 
You know what the finish is? Is I feel like I've just sipped an IPA on the finish. Like there's, yeah. a, it, but an IPA that's slightly on the malty side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it ha- it yeah. is, it's bright on the front half of my tongue. But mm. still, there's stuff popping around, but it's not. Yeah. It's not my forte for what I would, I would lean to. So, I think the Musenier huh. shows that that they can blend better. Now that I think there's an Armorillo uh, cask. I forget how you say it. Amaro. Amaro cask. That I would want to try as well too. That I think from at about forty bucks too, from where I'm at. So that's a those, really good price for this yeah. stuff. For yeah, for, think, for experimenting think, with something that's really good. Yeah, for, for trying something that has is, has a unique kind of pedigree and off the wall. I don't think it. I think it's good enough to get it. That like I said, the, the Musenier, I can drink that. I can mm-hmm. touch that bottle. That's not a problem. I yeah. feel like that's going to be the same with Amarillo, where you get it, it's fine. I think their bourbon needs a little. A little tweaking, you know, or maybe an extra year in the barrels in Nevada. Hmm. Six months a year. I think it just needs to try to get some more of that wood note on it. Yeah. <laughs> the only scotch that would kill a bourbon would have to be an Isla. I don't know if I agree completely with that, but it is, it is an accurate statement that Isla would try to kill a bourbon. It would. Just smother it in the smoke and flames. Don't be used for bourbon barrels. And, and dump it in the seawater. Yeah, Isla would <laughs> kill everything. I know. Well, it wouldn't be a bourbon barrel if it wasn't used. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I am i don't think I... I, mm, I like two of them on their own. I, I, it's interesting. I'd love to know how long they were aging it in general for each of these. You know, how, how old is each? Yeah. With the movie, you know, it's four and fives and it's a blend. I find it odd that it's a corn whiskey and they didn't oh. toss any malt in that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. even if it would, even if one of the varietals had 10, 15 percent malt, I think you might get a really neat pull in a different direction. Um, At least a little bit of rye okay. as well. If, yeah. Do you, you still have some more of the the three way blend? Yeah. Oh, I gotta make a three way blend. Hold on, we can do that. So just for just for giggles. I was trying to think of something. It's like, what could it, John got me thinking? And not not Isla because I didn't I didn't want to kill it. It's like, what could what could put a pair of testicles on it? So I've got a uh, a pick of uh, Tawakaro, and I threw a I threw a dab of that in there, and it's sixty four point eight percent, and threw that sucker on there, and you get that that. Texas butter dust it, you know, that comes over and, and then it, it almost took it over, but then you pick up a little bit of that fruit. It starts, it's very layered. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we're what five in tonight. <laughs> it's Sunday night. <laughs> hey, that's where it's supposed to be. Okay. We'll get into this. Mm-hmm. One. All right. Let's see what Isla will do. This is the blend one that I, that I, that I didn't like earlier. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to try again. Okay, no. Ooh. Okay. A lot more spice on my end. Spice blew up on mine. Is that the three, three, three blend? Way. The three way. It's just a... Okay. Well, it's, it's a, it's a circus different in my nose level. right now. <laughs> ben, ben, what what aisle are you going for? He's not listening. He's getting talked to. From his He's wife. in daddy mode. Yeah, dad mode. You Sunday can tell by night. the hat. Yep. Yeah. He turns it sideways like every which way but loose when he's getting ready to fight. Um, <laughs> ben, what Isla did you do? <laughs> Cletus? <laughs> what are you talking about? What I've Isla? Got a, I've got Kalila. I want to okay. go with the, the gentle Isla and see how that, that plays okay. with this. I know you got an Isla in there, Sean, or something. Let me see what I got. Okay. He's a, Sean's also been a big fan of the old Forester's rye. Uh, yes. We had, I had a bit of the, that. Is, that's, that's a really, nice rye. Really mm-hmm. tasty. It has a nice slap you around bite and then it goes away. But I don't know. It, it tugs at you and holds on. I don't know. I, I like it. I was. It's got a really weird it. side effect of disappearing quickly. Uh, what do we got here? All right, I'm going to throw some Wee Beastie in with this four blend. So now i got a blend of five. We have a oh, you put putting the Wee Beastie Actually, in Actually, a blend of six. 
Okay, okay. We're, I'm on a, I'm on a blend of five at the moment, adding the Kalila. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. We are gonna put a battle hill. <laughs> uh, Una, Una. Una. Four year old. Oh Una. man! Yeah. It's it's peated. <laughs> oh, this is buttery. What did you pick now, Mike? Oh, so this has the blend of three, and then I threw the uh, the Virginia cider in there, okay. and then I put a dash of the Tawakaro pick, and then I just threw some wee beastie in it. Right. And old. man, I mean the the peat is not it's not in your and because wee beastie is it's it's a little rough, but wow, it's buttery. It's like buttery peat. You know, this kind of took this a very similar Ooh. note. It, it's but it is it's got a very buttery note to it. I don't have the the towel car like you do, but and then the peat kicks in. You you well you do. It's just your man. Damn it. Yeah, I have it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you have it. Yeah. Hey, Mark from still in Canada. Oh, hey, Mark's in there. Oh, oh, big deal. More Canucks in the stream. Yeah, Mark won some awards. Yeah, we got to talk about that. Um, yeah. The, the, the Buna Haben four year old destroyed this blend. <laughs> this fucking case <laughs> over the top it. of it. But uh, it was the Ooh. US Open competition, uh, I think it was. I'm not digging this at all. Kill, kill <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he won. Uh, oh, God. Hold on a second. I need two seconds. Separate stream. That's a good idea, Mark. We should do another stream with you. Yeah. We yeah. we can definitely we can definitely pull you back on because that that's awesome, Mark. Give me a second here. Since the border's back. closed and we can't go up there for a while. Yeah, what is that? We need to get that broken. I know. I wanted to get. I wanted to be back up there again. Yeah, national the grand I national close off the whole country. The grand national <laughs> spirits competition, and the top five distilleries. Number three is our good friend Mark at Silver Fox Distilleries in Ontario. Number three. You haven't even been open a fucking year, Mark. Yeah. He got he got two of the top five, right? Yeah, I, the, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Um Cheers, Mark. Yeah, cheers. That's that's what that's the type of stuff we're talking That's about. one of the most anticipated uh, distillery uh, tastings that I want to go to just because they're so nice, they're so cool. And listening to him talk about their spirits and how passionate they are, and he's like yeah, I got this weird idea. I'm going to make Okay, I want to try it. <laughs> it makes you feel like if we're there on a Thursday, by Friday, we could have come up with our own blend. And Mark, and Mark would be like, yeah. let's fucking do this. You know? Yes. <laughs> like, I, do you have everything we need? Yeah. While you're riding around in Doctor Who's car. And I, I forget, there's, there was another one too, but uh, oh. Dracula's Flower or something I want to taste. He's got a bunch of stuff up there that are, uh, mm. are wonderful things we all want to take a take a taste of because it's good no kidding now i'm going back to this blend the blue all right this is fucking slapped this thing into left field this like, one is yeah. the nose of this is so good kalila took this over mm. and it went really funky total left field i was not digging it all but i've given it a little bit more time in the glass and this is going to sound really weird but this is starting to take an art bag turn yeah, you know what? it's reminding me of it's reminding me of like our. You just oh, you're you're anti. I'm anti. That's fine. I get that. The so, brininess and whatever. I I mean, Budenhamen by itself, fine. But when you mix it with everything else, it's not. I want to keep everything down. Screwing <laughs> <laughs> with screwing with Sean's stuff. You don't want results, right? <laughs> this well, the, sure. so the, the this nose is, it's a. Uh, it's very buttery. It's like buttery, and then it gets this basement funk, and then you get a little bit of peat, but not much. I mean, the peat's just, it's like very subtle and very, it's like very nice and kind of, of a sensual peat, almost like like a like an oogie. Oh, you're, no, you just, you think you're taunting both Ben and I. Oh, you? man. I mean, this is, the nose of this is great. It's probably going to taste like hell. You're here too, Sean. You tell Mike to fuck off. <laughs> I don't like well enough to turn the fuck off yet. Mm. Mm. I feel like I'm looking at some kind of mutant. The two of you sharing your <laughs> earbud together, <laughs> like y'all were joined at the shoulder or something. I didn't, a, I didn't bring a splitter, so yeah. like those, like those old Guinness World Record shores. Here's, here's a, yeah. Here's, 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 here's Ying and Sing. Watch them ride their motorcycles together. <laughs> it is a Siamese twin stream. You, you clean, 
Sean, you make sure he cleaned those earbuds before you <laughs> pop them in there. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This. <laughs> the the palette is just all funk. The the palette is is uh almost it's not at the intensity, but it's almost a spring bank funk on the palette. Mm. And that's not, I mean, if you like that, it is not bad, but it's weird. It, it you know, like all the buttery flavor, everything else is just gone. It's just flat funk. That's, I'll say it's weird. I wouldn't necessarily trust your mixing skills. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's drinking a different whiskey in here than we are. That's the point. But still. <laughs> <laughs> Got to experiment. That's the, the best four, part. This four-year-old is so aggressive, man. It's well, it's it's peated. Mm. I know, I know but it's the, added the, to the, it. It's, it's actually says heavily peated yeah, it on is. the bottle, and, and it's vicious. <laughs> like it is like it by takes itself it is good, but I mean it just it only lasts here. It I would say last. Ben, you have all these whiskeys. You should try that. <laughs> it, I, I I I mean I would in, like as a whiskey that I would buy. I would actually like. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, just that funk. It's just like, oh yeah. Funky, nasty. Yeah. Bring on the funk, baby. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's bring this back here. Now this one with the Kalila. It's, I, I've been drinking that one. Oh, I think I like it's the it. Kalila and the, that Virginia cider cask or what jump out in it. And the combination of the two sends it in a total kind of art bag direction. Mm. Think of think of Anno or maybe the Ten, kind of in that in that territory right there with this. It's, it's not exactly like sipping Kalila, but it's uh, I'm getting notes that remind me more of Ardbeg. But there's mm. a there's a funky licorice on the uh, finish. That's mm-hmm. just like okay, where did that come from? <laughs> Except for maybe the Kalila. Mm. <laughs> and we started off with. With broken broken barrel, <laughs> right? We went in a completely different direction. Yeah, this was okay. this was a review of broken barrel and few spirits for the first is, thirty minutes, and then things went on their own path, like as yeah traditionally supposed to happen on the show. Well, inspired by yeah. sometimes life happens. They're, yeah. They're, yeah, they're the base of things. That, that's what matters right now. Um, that was a fun blend. I mean, still going back to that 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 moose and arrow. <laughs> Musanara. Musanara. That's my favorite. Chopper. <laughs> no, no, and it should be. I agree completely. Daratuma. Musanara is the best one that they have. It's just very good. Compared to the rest. But, Oof. yeah, the man has got me biting. So, I don't know. Hey, folks, I'll let you chat. I think we're uh, moose and arrow. Moose and, arrow. <laughs> moose, and arrow. <laughs> moose and squirrel. Yes, John. Yes. Is that Russian? <laughs> but I think that uh, I think that's probably good for the, for the chat that didn't know you we were coming coming on tonight. So yeah. I, mean, I got I got to thank everyone out there. Thank you for stopping in tonight. We, we appreciate it. We thank you for coming in. We know we didn't give you any time today, um, but we also didn't do a review this week, so we figured you should get a, get a little bit of love from us before the yeah. week is out. And uh, and thank you, Sean, for being the benefactor. Yeah, yeah well, no problem. Yeah, we, we, we like the benefactors. And just remember, if you're a benefactor, you can come on the show like Sean. That's Anytime right. You can Pat- to chuck you to grab stuff. Always do it. Patrick will come to your house and share my earbuds. With you. <laughs> share your <whiskey. laughs> it doesn't sound right when you say it like that. <laughs> yeah, Pat- Patrick will come to your house and put things in your ear. <laughs> there you go, scaring him again. <laughs> Where has that earbud really been? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and, you, and you are exactly right, Ice House. We will see you tomorrow <laughs> evening on the chat when we are having on Chris from Westland Distillery. Mm-hmm. That is going to be an awesome show. They really take stuff seriously. They do st- They plan their whole distillery out regionally as far as what they want. That's right. You, feel it's sexy, man. you know what's sexy? That first cover piece. 
That, that yeah. pamphlet is badass. That it thing is, is the best thing I've ever seen come from a distillery. No yep. crap. It is right up. It, it's a little more professional, but the thing that Jolie sent me for Spirits of French, like right along the same thing where it's like, bam, information, cool hey. stuff, things you want to know. Written communication of information and on anything. They like break down everything about the whiskey yeah, they're sure. doing. The grain, the the wood. I mean, it's it's a Bible for Westland, and it's awesome. <laughs> 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 did you see what did you see what Mark said? Sanitized before insertion. I don't even know what happened. I don't know what happened. Do you see what Mark said? But just liquid, right? Just like, <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not helping your case. No, yeah, I'm yeah. Not. <laughs> you feel better about the whole situation. <laughs> Maybe it worse. <laughs> but yeah, so, so stopping tomorrow. We have Chris on. It is going to be an awesome show. We're going to talk yeah. about what's going on with them, how they're approaching stuff, how they've done stuff, how they're very malt orientated. Knew they were going to be that because the climate leaned into it the whole time. We all know they're putting out great stuff. Um, and then we're going to do a tasting of their peated, the sherry, and the normal release. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to be some really, really good stuff. If you haven't had them, it's going to give you a good idea of stuff. And then we might have Chris on again in the future where we do some of their more exciting releases further down the line. Because so I know poor Mike does not have the Pete week that Ben and I have. We might just have to ready to do another wrestling without him. Damn it. terrible. Sean, do you want to come on? You can get you that one here. Right Possible. Here. I don't know if I want to be here with Oprah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's okay. What are you doing? Gene Nevis. It's a 10-year-old? That's all I'm getting there. Oh, uh, it's a Ben Nevis batch one, 10-year-old. Um. Batch one. Okay, fine. You're just being me. That's fine. Whatever. Okay. You guys can you, drink your Pete Week. You, you can be you can be mean back. That's fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Eli, thanks for stopping in. We're at the tail end here. Oh, hey, but Eli. Thanks for stopping in. It's good to see you. Um, but yeah, I think we are at the moment where we can probably start calling this week's stream. Uh, <laughs> probably a wise choice. <laughs> probably a wise, finished. Probably the the way to look at that. Um, Let's get into more. Let's get into- wait, oh, here's a taunt there. It's just like, hey, wait, we're ending the show. No, we're not. Wait, we're ending the show. What, what, are, we, what are they doing? I don't know. <laughs> that's what happens when you share earbuds. Yeah. yeah. That is, oh, that's, I, I can't keep things straight. Uh, my left is my right. My right is my left. But, like we said, I think that's good. As that's long good. as you're only sharing buds with one person. Yeah. You're okay. <laughs> You share buds with one person. You share buds with all the people that person has shared buds with. Uh, I live at home, man. Um, <laughs> oh, and John. You have a serious question there. What? No, after dark. We can we can maybe look into that. And John. Fine. Pretty sure. <laughs> That's probably accurate. Probably accurate. So we'll, we'll we'll let that go. Happens to everybody, John. <laughs> it's um, premature. You're done. You're done. So. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Well, <laughs> you, once you don't have the stamina anymore, it's good to just take the take a deep breath and come back. So maybe we'll come back in 20 minutes. Maybe we won't. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but for all of you out in the chat, thank you for stopping in. To Broken Barrel, thank you for the interesting releases yes. that you guys are putting out. Um, I I found them unique. I'd like to know more about the process. Maybe you can hone in on a couple of things over time, but you have the start of something interesting. I'd like to see where it goes. Mm-hmm. But uh, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Sean, for the whiskey. Yes, sure. thank you. Right. Yep. Thanks. And to all of you out there in the chat, remember it's not the size of your dad. Maybe it's longer. This? Maybe. Is it a like fish this? story? What's going it's on? Not, it's not the size of your den, it's the love of whiskey. Cheers, everyone out there. Cheers. Let's get into it. One, two, three.
Thank you.